You ready, Drew? Ready. We're live. Oh, I should put my phone away. <laughs> We're a few minutes early. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Well, we're early. That's okay. People will join us a little later. That's right. You're always early for everything. It's true. Better early than late, I've always said. Um, so what are we going to talk about this week? Well, well I mean, I think we know what we're going to talk about. We put it in the title. But... Well, Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year, everybody. When we do these lives in Mark's office, uh, I think we need to get a second chair. I'm sitting <laughs> on a table, and every time I look like I'm much taller than you. Hey, business isn't that great. We can't get a second chair yet. <laughs> I'm not really taller than Mark, but your hair is like all over looks, the place. Yeah, I, know, it's so weird. I mean, I'm not criticizing this. You need to it use more gel, you like me. Are actually, my oh. hair is a little more unruly. Anyway, happy New Year! Happy New Year! We hope everyone had a nice, relaxing break. We had a pretty relaxing, low key <laughs> break. Did. We did. Very low key. Very. Um, we like to err on the side of caution around here, so we uh, really did lay low. But it was nice, restful. We needed that after our renovation was complete. Yes. And we've kind of been working in this business. So we're back at it this week. The kids are home. Our kids were home before Christmas too. So mm -hmm. uh, lots, lots of time with our children. And we just thought that this week it might be nice to talk about that. And, you know, uh, obviously a lot of teams have been managed virtually for quite a while now. Uh, or maybe a bit of back and forth. They've gone into the office now they're back at home or people are working hybrid. Right now, most people are probably at home if you can work from home. Uh, and so just acknowledging that that's hard for some people and as a manager or a leader, what might uh, we be able to implement or um, continue to do to keep spirits high on our team? Um, motiv motivation high, engagement high, how can you keep the culture Product, rolling while productivity you're, is important too while like, you're all you know uh, apart and everyone has a lot happening in their own personal lives right now with kids at home so true um mark kind of went through this in the very first lockdown that we had as a leader um and you can maybe talk about that experience but now that we're two years into this and it's happening still um what can we offer as some advice moving forward yeah, I think it's a great topic. I'm glad you came up with it. I think it's timely. Like, yes, everybody's at home again. Uh, but even when we're back, and hopefully sooner than later, um, I think hybrid at least is always going to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just the reality. Um, I think some organizations are going to go back to the office, and I think some of them need to. Um, but a lot of organizations are going to be pretty progressive where they can allow people to work from home and, and they're going to use it as a competitive advantage for recruitment and retention. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I'm not going to judge any business owner that picks one over the other, but you need to be prepared for both, is, I guess is what I'm saying. And, you know, whether that's public health measures like the one we're in now um, or just the regular operation of business to retain your staff because people's lives are changing. Um, so having said all of that, yeah, maybe I'll start with, uh, my scenario and give you some specific examples of how I did it and and then we can talk about maybe people could put it into a process for them moving forward. So I when the pandemic started remember way back you know never dealt with this before I had just gotten to my president's role it had been less than a year um, and this came out and I had said to the owner of the company I said listen um, you know we got to keep people safe we got to get people working from home um, even our construction guys, so just to be clear, I was the president of a construction company. Um, and for those of you who know me, know which one. Um, but even our guys on site, like how do we keep them safe? Because yes, indeed, they've got to be there building. Remember this first lockdown, there was the whole thing of what's essential and what's not. And construction was one of the industries that's been deemed essential all the way through. But we weren't sure what we were doing at the beginning with that. And so what we did instantly without any guidance, without any lockdowns, remember before the lockdown started, there was the, hey, you know, maybe we should be working from home. This could be coming. Um, we sent all of our staff home and then we went on site with the construction guys. And I can say this proudly. I, I implemented a policy with my GMs of what people in the home would look like. And we determined there would be no more than one construction guy in the home unless the work being done by one trade. So there was never more than one trade in the home, unless the work being done by that one trade needed two individuals 
who could be socially distanced. So think about drywall, right? A guy can't come in and bring in a piece of drywall, drywall by themselves and mud and tape. It's just not going to happen. And the reality is there's a family that's bought that home that needs to move into it. So there was a level of risk. So we did everything we could, including hand washing stations on site at each home, sanitizer, masks, check-ins, everything you can do. This was before it became the trendy thing to do for companies. We just did it because the right thing to do. So I'm sharing a lot there, which probably is straying from the topic, but we did that first. And then we had everybody work from home. That was a no brainer. Everyone in the office who could do their job from home, you're gone, work from home. You've all got laptops. Most organizations do now. Um, get out of here. And then that led us to, okay, well, now what do we do from a leadership perspective and a process perspective? And so I thought it was important as a president to get out on site with the guys who had to work on site. You know, they were there. So what was I doing as a leader to get in there and make sure their safety was top of mind and we were protecting the best we could. So we implemented all those protocols for people who had to work on site. Um, and then as the leader, I went out to site. So it's one thing to say, okay, we've, we've got the guys safe, but it's another thing to get out and monitor it and make sure it's happening. So that's number one, if you've got people who have to be on site, every single protocol you can do and constantly communicating with them to make sure those protocols are being upheld. But let's go back to where it's applicable for probably 80% of the workforce, and I'm clearly making up that number. <laughs> the people who work in the office and now have to work from home. One, how do you make sure they're productive? Because unfortunately or fortunately, that's what most business owners are going to be concerned with and you can't blame them. The more productive you are from home, the more jobs they can protect. Um, and so we had said, well, we've already got our one-on-ones. We've already got our department meetings. None of that's going to stop and we're going to do them all remotely. And we had each individual leader continue to work with their teams. And what I would do every morning is I did check-ins at the beginning of the pandemic. I did one check-in in the morning with my executive team. And I did one check-in at the end of the afternoon with one department and the executive team. And we just talk about, hey, how you feeling? What's on the go? Because remember, this was the beginning of the pandemic. Stuff's dropping. Was this trade coming? Are they not? Where are we at with the procurement? And so your people needed a little extra attention to make sure they could do their jobs and you can trust them from home. So what we did was we created morning check-ins as an executive team and afternoon check-ins with the executive team, but one department in between. And then kept on with the regular 101s, etc. And then the other thing I did as a leader was, you know, um, personal check-ins. So I'd go and check in with the staff once every couple of weeks through the time they're working from home, just how you do it, half an hour. We just sit around and in a virtual environment, obviously on Zoom, and the conversation was not about work. It was about them. How are the challenges in life? How are things working with the kids being at home? Or what are the things working with the kids in school and you working from home? What's the balance look like? What can we be doing to help? And those proactive conversations made everyone comfortable because they could speak as a group. But more importantly, myself as a leader, I could get the feedback of what the majority items were, not just the one-offs, and react to process and policy changes based on what I was hearing from the team. But those were about personal life. How are you balancing it? Where are you at? We all know we're going through different mental health challenges through this entire pandemic. We had them before, and they're being like, magnified yeah, through it and so how are we checking in with our team so that was another process that was put into place i think one of the things i've heard too and i worked virtually through this whole pandemic is that um people are realizing how much they did actually connect with their co-workers in an in-person environment because there was that water cooler chat they would sit around the lunchroom together um those kinds of things that were taken away and when you get on a zoom call it's usually Hi, how are you? Good, down to business. And there's not as much of that chit chat back and forth. So people aren't getting to know their um, colleagues on a, a personal level. So implementing something like that at the beginning of your meetings where everyone can kind of take a moment to tell how they're doing or what's happening in their life personally, not everyone may want to share, but I do think it helps implement some of that, that that connection piece that's missing right now yeah and you know it's all relative to what's going on in your personal life that we can help during your business hours right and so like you know i don't need to know that you know you and your husband are arguing or whatever that looks like um, <laughs> i don't think people should. but yeah right but but i want to be clear what i do need to know is like you know 3 30 is a real challenge for the department meeting now that i'm at home 
okay, let me talk to the entire team and let's see if we can get some flexibility around what time we run the department meeting because things have changed. You're not in the office, you don't have daycare, you're at home with the kids, whatever those examples may be. So that personal round table was really, really important. So continue the one-on-ones, continue your regular department meetings, do your executive check-ins if you're an executive leader in the mornings and check in with a department once a day. That doesn't mean you have to check in with every department once a day. It's one department each day and see how they're doing and if they've got any fires. And the reason I did the 30 minute check-in in the morning with the leaders, right? And that may be your managers, directors, VPs, depending how big you wanna go and the size of your company was, okay, here's what's on the plate today. Let's give everyone the answers they need to go and lead their teams remotely. And then let's sit down at the end of the day and let's discuss what got done, what's still in the way and what's gonna go on tomorrow. It's like the walkthroughs we did at BMO Field when we were opening the stadium in live in person. We started every day with, okay, where are the deficiencies from yesterday? What's on the go? And then we did an inventory at the end of the day to see what did we get done and where do you need some help where we didn't get things done? So those check-ins are key. Um, that personal one is like really important as well. So where I'll jump to next, and then I'll maybe share how to put all this in a process and stay organized, right? Because those are the communication pieces. Um, but when the lockdown got longer, right? And I've shared this story with other people and it's been in, I think I shared a little bit in the book and I've shared in some videos. Um, you know, I went to the owner at the time and said, listen, before you let go of anybody, like, and again, this is me thinking, here I am now, I'm out of the job, I'm starting my own company, getting it off the ground, and and, and the financial scenario has changed. Well, at that point, and you thought it would be a few weeks. Thought it'd be a few weeks, maybe a couple months, Max. And so I said, you know, to the owner, listen, before you let one guy or gal go, who's probably getting paid a third of what I get paid or half of what I get paid, um, I'll take a seat. I'll take a seat, and if it goes longer than I think, I'll take a little bit of a... Uh, I'll do a little consulting on the side or whatever, right? Minata, no worries. Um, <laughs> and, and so the next day, and and rightfully so. I'm literally laughing because I know how it actually yeah. rolled out, and it's <laughs> yeah, not that way. That's the real story, but no, I'm, I'm underplaying the emotional impact. Um, rightfully so, the owner the next day said, "Hey, uh, I'm going to take your laptop, and I'm going to keep you posted, and give me the corporate credit card." And hopefully we can ride this wave because, you know, they were building less homes. Sites were closing down. One of the biggest sites internationally was shut down. And so it makes total sense. Um, and I'm still glad I did it. I think I underestimated the impact it would have both financially and emotionally for me. Basically on our entire life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been interesting in, in that decision. But, you know, there's a lot of positive that have come out of it. So um, but anyways, made that decision, had that conversation and was put on the sidelines. No big deal, I'll be back in a few weeks, maybe a month or two. But I didn't stop. Now, granted, I was no longer the president, I was no longer a full-time employee. I couldn't engage on a regular basis with employees on one-on-ones in development. And quite frankly, um, I just start making some other type of revenue in consulting. So that if, if I'm not getting paid, I gotta, I gotta do work elsewhere. But I still cared about the team. And so what I did was I actually implemented that communication model for all the employees that had gotten laid off temporarily at the same time. You'll remember this. We'd sit down every couple of Fridays. I'd set up a Zoom. We'd all crack a pint and say, what's going on? And what are you doing? And we'd talk about their nerves. We'd talk about their fears, the financial impacts, how I could help. And even to the point of, you know, what are you guys going to do if this lasts too long? And some of them are like, I'm going to need to look for another job. And I'm like, well, that is not great news, but I understand it. Um, and I still care about you. So how do I help? whether that's a reference, whether that's giving you some guidance on how to look for another job, um, wanting to keep you with the company I was with temporarily on hold because we were creating a great place to work, but understanding who you were as a human being. Here's the disconnect that a lot of you should do if you've temporarily laid off staff again through this. Just touch base with them. You have no idea what these people are going through from a mental health perspective, not being employed, and maybe loving working for your company and wanting to go back. If you're doing another round of layoffs right now or, or, or part-time cuts or whatever it looks like in your industry, create a little forum to uh, touch base with those people. You know, We had quite a few conversations. We had quite a few tears with those people. You don't understand it till you can walk a mile in those shoes. And what it did for me, it really helped me understand, you know, 
as I grow this company and, and hopefully as we grow and scale and add employees, you know, when I terminate an employee, because sometimes it just doesn't work out, boy, is that conversation going to look different? Is that care going to look different? Because now I've gone through it myself. It was the first time in my life, in my career that I had um, and temporarily became permanent because I had to pay bills. And I went through the same fears the rest of the team was going through. So what I think you should do if you're a leader, one, as I shared that, have that weekly or bi-weekly or monthly forum of, hey guys, like how do we help you get through this? Put the company aside for a moment. How do we help you get through this? Because we want you back and we care. Do that same thing with the people who aren't in the office that you've temporarily laid off, if indeed you've done that. So those are the steps that I put in place. Um, we have 15 minutes left. Maybe we can talk about a process, but I've been rambling for like 12 <laughs> minutes, Jodes. What do you want to Well, add? I would just say like, let's skip now ahead 22 months, right? Is that and how long it's been? 20, 22 months. No, it's been longer months. than that. No, we're, March would be two years, so... Oh my so we're coming up, you know, we've been doing this for a long time now. We've gone back and forth a number of times now. We've had um, feelings of hope that things were getting better for a long time now. So I would say fast forward to now, we're back in this situation. Um, and Here I go spirits. again on my own. <laughs> okay. Up and down. Okay. Spirits are, I think personally, uh, spirits are low. Yes. Right? Uh, people, Anger, people frustration. People are frustrated. People are stressed out that their kids are home again. For me, working through this pandemic full time from home, what I really appreciated from a leader is trust and flexibility. So now I'm an employee that takes pride in my work and wants to do a good job. But for a, for a boss to come and say to me, "This is really tough. I know the kids are home." I know, you know, you, you maybe can't manage your regular nine to five schedule right now, but whenever you can get the work done is okay with me, mm -hmm. right? Like you had that. If I definitely had that. Absolutely. If I had to hop, you know, take a break in the afternoon to help the kids with school, but then hop back on after dinner, or if I got on really early in the morning and then I took a midday break, that was okay. And I think for a lot of parents, that's kind of how you have to manage this. I mean, our youngest son is in grade one. Yeah, last year was in senior kindergarten. He can't manage the process on his own. I can get him, you know, on and he can mute and unmute and that kind of thing. But he generally has questions as he goes about his work. And um, it's, you kind of have to be close by to see what they're doing when they're that young. Now, our other guy's in grade four and he's pretty self-sufficient at this point. But, you know, you still need to to be around. That's so, all spirit. He's brilliant. So I just, I just really appreciated the flexibility to say like, get the work done in the time you need. We trust that you're going to get the work yep. done. Um, so that I didn't feel the pressure of having to be online from nine to five when my needs were being pulled elsewhere. And that gets built with trust between employee and uh, leader probably. But in these times, I mean, unless you're underperforming in, in that capacity and maybe some people are, um, if you can get your job done, then offer the flexibility. And it has to continue to be offered now because it's the exact same situation we were in last year. Mm -hmm. I think you raise a great point because I saw it firsthand, like your support people where you were working before you came and joined the company here were tremendous. Mm -hmm. They were very good. And, and, and you busted your ass because you had that trust. Right. Um, and that's what I think this entire thing comes down to. Um, Pre-pandemic, through the pandemic, Post-pandemic, whether we go back live or hybrid or remote, it comes down to trust. And that's not a criticism, but let's be honest about it. You know, some leaders and organizations are, well, we need to get people in the office because they don't learn from senior management when they're not in the office. You didn't talk to them when they're in the office anyways. What does that have to do with seeing senior management? Give it a rest. Like... Some senior management do that, and I get that. Then, yeah, let's get those organizations and get people back in a hybrid mode so they can experience that. But you can do that virtually, too. Now, having said that, um, I think the point you raised, Jodes, that I want to go back to trust is, you know, so let's deal with that. Let's put trust on the table. It's And, and it goes from both ends, employer, employee. Like, I don't know if my boss trusts me, so I, I can't help my kid in the next five minutes. i got to show that I'm online. Right. And that, that might not be fair to your boss or your employer. They may trust you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just park that. Let's, let's assume they're good people and they trust you. And you're assuming they're not, so you're carrying all this stress about flexibility. On the flip side, the employer's like, 
hey, I'm just trying to keep these people employed. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't about me making more money this year. I'm a good person. I want to make sure my people are safe. And part of me keeping them employed is we need to continue to make money. Right. And to continue to make money so we don't go into a loss position, I need these people to be productive. And I don't know if they're doing it from home. Mm -hmm. And that is completely okay and completely natural. I've, I've changed my view on that as I age. I'll probably change it three days from now because that's where I've been through this pandemic. But I might change my opinion on that. But, but that's okay. Let's deal with trust. Because once we deal with the issue of trust, then we can put process and communication on top of it mm -hmm. to give both those parties trust. And it goes back to the process I was talking about. Mm -hmm. We don't create an environment where regular one-on-ones are part of the dialogue. Because those can be done on Zoom. Listen, this is where I say bull effing crap if you tell me you can't do a one-on-one -on -one in Zoom and be just as effective as per as per that? Oh God, yeah, that's an excuse I see all. Like, stop it. <laughs> We're having a one-on-one, -on like, come on, easy now. One-on-ones, right? And so if they're not done regularly and you go into the virtual environment, that trust isn't there. We haven't been right. having the dialogue the about your performance. We don't the have the productivity trust. measurements. We don't talk about your KPIs and talk about the behaviors that support it and how I can help you. So now we go to virtual and I can't even walk into your office when numbers are down and say, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Well, that's trust. And if you don't have process in place from a leadership and we're going to, you, you are going to have a hard time trusting your employees when the results aren't there. So you don't know where to go. So the initial reaction is everybody get here. You know, I worked with an employer who said, everybody has to start at eight o'clock. And I thought, well, because that's when I want to start my day and that's when business gets done. And I'm like, okay, but like. You have moms and dads that work in this company. Mm -hmm. That is not real. That is your decision. And that is a lack of trust. You do not trust that your people really can't be there at eight o'clock. You don't trust that their lives are changing. And how do you change your process so you can create that trust? Mm -hmm. Start at 830. See if your productivity drops. Measure it. And then you can go back. Whatever. Anyways, trust. Right On the flip side, as an employee... It's really important that if you are having this dialogue, you are open and transparent of where you're struggling and know your numbers and know your responsibility and don't, mis don't misuse that trust by saying, well, I can work from home and I'll work when I want. And I know most of us aren't doing that, but that creates a problem in getting trust from the other end. So putting this entire process in place, I go back to it, of keeping your weekly one-on-ones having your executive update meetings so your executives can support your leaders and by department during the day, and then having your wrap-up meetings at the end of the day, and then doing one life check-in every couple weeks. And again, it, the life check-in is about helping them become and remain more productive. I want to know that Jody's really struggling with Thursday afternoons. So she's empowered now when we have that dialogue to say, well, Jody, stop worrying about Thursday afternoons. Mm -hmm. Can you work Friday evening? Because what you do is that entry or it's whatever. Like, I don't care when you do it. And now she's going to become more productive and I'm going to see the numbers of invoices she puts through the system in AP or AR at the end of the week from making that change. And I can measure it. Trust grows because we've got a process and nothing changes. Now, I want to backtrack a little bit because I sounded very anti in the office and I'm not, just to be clear. There are roles that need to be put in position in the office. There are things that people work in industries where they need to be there and do the work. But that is not an excuse not to have these processes in place live. And what you're finding is a lot of business owners don't have these processes in place live. And now they're pooched because people are working remotely and they have no idea if they're doing their job. And human nature is to say, well, the numbers are down. It must be them. They're not doing it. They're screwing around. And the reality may be, if you had the process, you'd find out what the sticking point is and why the numbers are down, change the behavior, change the process, increase the results. That is what I would do. And the irony of this entire thing about managing remotely, it's about doing the exact same effing thing you should be doing live. Sorry, the F-bomb necessary? Yeah, necessary. But I didn't say the word. I will say, though, there's some, like... Don't you, we, go we defend talk, it. Don't you go defend it. Don't you go no, no, play on no. the other we side of it. We talk a lot about what you should do as a leader because that's what our business is. But let's say you have a leader who isn't really Fire in, him. engaged <laughs> in the way that... 
Sorry, I'm just feeling it. Oh my gosh. Go ahead. You have a leader who's not as engaged. Yes. He doesn't really check in as regularly. You don't have that one-on-one set up with them. So you, it's not like you know that you have that dedicated time. Mm-hmm. I think it's still important for you as an employee when you're struggling, right? Mm-hmm. Or when it's a time like this, that stuff is hard. You seek out the time with that person. You book it in their calendar if they have an ass- you ask their assistant to book it, whatever, half an hour, sit yep. down, 15 minutes, sit down to say, listen, this is how this is affecting me and my family. Here's how, um, you know, I find it challenging to perform my duties within this time frame at this time. Here's my suggestion. Can I? Mm-hmm. Right. If you proactively go as the employee with the solution already, here's how I think I can get the hours in. But I need a break from. 11 till one every day to like manage the kids or whatever it is. Um, I feel like you'll get the buy-in from your leader, but some of them aren't in tune enough to come and ask you for what you need at this time. Ah, you raise a great point. Like you need to take some accountability as the employee to raise the red flag and say, I need some help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like this is not going to work for me right now. I can't do it all. You don't get to remain silent. And like there's accountability on both sides of a relationship for it to work, the leader and the team member. And so I'm completely with you. Now, the reality is what you'll hear from a lot of people is like, okay, that's all nice. But when I do that, I don't get a response Mm -hmm. or I get a negative response. Well, that should just solidify where you want to go when this is all done. (laughs) Yeah. Like you still have accountability, but you still have a decision as an employee. If you've got a leader who says, too bad, I don't want to hear from you. Do your job. And if you keep doing that job, that's on you. (laughs) Like, and listen, I'm all about sharing leadership tips and sales tips to make you successful, to stay in the culture that you love and stay with that company and grow. But don't whine about it if you hate what you do. (laughs) Start looking for something else. No one needs to know. Start looking for another job. If If that's the type of leader response you get is too bad, just do your job. Some people will stay. Okay, I get it. There's clarity. I'm gonna do my job. I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna punch the clock. I'm gonna get paid. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but don't but don't this... stand around after your boss has said, I don't want to hear from you and sit there and continue to work in that company and complain that your boss doesn't want to hear from you. Right. And Get even, out. When, even when this latest school um, closure came about, you know, our immediate thought, we, t- we talked about this together, our immediate thought was, oh my gosh, like all these parents who are, you know, can't take time off work to do this or who are working, you can't... Um, you're distracting me. With Sorry, why well, checking for comments? We gotta figure out a better uh, lineup. Anyway, you can All we looked at each other and said is like, "Oh my gosh, I hope these employers are understanding." Because literally, what else are people supposed to do right now if they're expected to help school their kids at home and also be online? And uh, the immediate response is, "How can these employers not be understanding? There's no other choice for people right now." But it sounds to me from conversations I've had, Some like not all employers are on board with, with well, and, trying and, to be supportive. And add that to the impact of parents who have kids that are homeschooling, like you said, and they can't balance both. Well, what does that show up like? Well, that's like, oh, my God, this is terrible for my kids because adults are afraid to tell their boss. It'd be easier for my kids if you could let me take care of them from home at the same time. And companies are afraid to tell the government, hey, now I'm getting off track here, but... <laughs> Give us funding so we can send our employees who we value and care about home paid properly so they can take care of their children and ride yet another lockdown out. But we don't do that. We just yell at each other because there's no trust and we scream and we hold our opinions instead of putting planning and process in place. It's the same thing in business as it should be in government. Shit, everybody, we're going to have to lock everyone down because we don't know what this is yet. Oh, boy, everyone's going to lose their minds, right? Totally, totally. Totally acceptable reaction by everybody. Instead of having a plan of saying, okay, we predict it's going to be this long by what we've seen in the rest of the world. It's going to cost X in funding for all the businesses. It's going to cost X to make our schools safe. We've got to shift our budget accordingly. And this is our plan as we lock you down for the next three weeks. It's a failure in leadership. But no plan, so, has, no, ha- no plan has been presented. No, but it's a failure. I, I Listen, I, I have not hidden from the fact that I am one of those people who is safer than sorry. But I put my kids back in school. I put my kids back in hockey because I know they need to be there. And the minute I followed the data and it was like, oh, my God, like there's outbreaks on hockey teams. There's outbreaks in schools. I, as a parent, made a decision to take them out. 
I want to put them back in. I can't wait to put them back in. <laughs> like we have work to do. Um, but at the same time, there's no plan. And there's no plan because there's no trust and there's no communication. That's it. It's pretty simple. And that's not a shot at this government, the next government, the last government. Take all that crap out of it and opinion and all of that. There is no plan. And there's no plan because there's no trust and there's no trust because there's no process. Right. You can put a process in work to manage your people virtually. Whoa, we could have gone off in a different direction there. <laughs> and who really, honestly, none of us are right with our opinions. I could be wrong 90% of the time. So let's You've get never a... said that to me before. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. But let's put opinions aside and let's deal with facts and let's deal with process. And again, let's put... I, I tried to draw a... Comp... <laughs> really tricky comparison there uh, and a really okay, oddly carve out the time to build the trust do your one on one. do the one-on-ones do, it's, it's find the time and you should have time working from home leaders but you also have kids and you also have kids who are homeschooling I get it we're all in the same situation together and we're not in it together by the way but we're all in the same situation together okay so do your one-on-ones if you haven't started them live now's a great time to do it virtually Fresh start. To Fresh the start. And, and I can help plug, plug, online training, plug, corporate training. <laughs> I can help with those five steps. And you can do them all virtually. Well, you, coaching during the game is a little hard. But four of the five you can do virtually. Um, do your executive meetings morning, so you're daily, so you're all on the same page, so you can go and lead your teams virtually through the day. Do your department meetings once a day at the end of every day for 30 minutes. And once every two weeks, do a life meeting and a life meeting in the context of work. How do we continue to allow you to be productive by allowing you flexibility and helping you overcome things you can't overcome on your own? If you do those things, you can manage your people remotely. You can build trust. And again, I need to finish with this. Some of us have to go back to the office like we do. Um, but that number is limited depending on the industry. So we have to get more comfortable with working hybrid and letting our people work from home if we want to retain talent. If you are in construction and you are in framing, you gotta, Obviously not. You gotta be, no, but it's, it sounds, if, if, if you are working in retail and the stores are open, right? And again, as an individual, you always have that choice to go and find a different industry if you're not comfortable with that. But the reality is some will be going back to the office, some will be going back to the live environment with clients, some will be working hybrid, and some will be working virtual. Put the process in place and it doesn't matter where you're at. Right. Right? Hell yeah. Also, bring a little energy to keep spirits high, right? People are down. You need to lighten Sing, up. Sing. Tell a joke. Lighten the mood Be a yourself. Bit. Let's end with a joke. Have, How a, about that? have a cocktail. Have a joke. Let's have a joke. At the end of the week. Oh, by the way, I have cocktails with clients now. It's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm looking at you, View Cube Vision Therapy. <laughs> Friday cocktails coming soon. And we literally just shoot, a, shoot the sugar about life and business. Um, people forget we're people. A good way to get to know each other. Though. Oh you gotta God. get to know people, right? It's, it's not gotta be I know so... that means tomorrow. I don't know why I keep saying that. No, think... we're Hakuna Matata. Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, no, I said Minata on purpose. I know, but Hakuna Matata means no worries. It means no worries for the rest of your days. Okay, tell one joke to finish. Have a great Thursday. No, come everyone. on, give us your best joke. I don't. I don't have. A give lot. us your best joke. Come on. I don't have a lot of jokes, but there's one funny one that a kid told me this summer that stuck with me. Okay. Okay. Did you hear about the guy who lost the whole left side of his body? Did you hear about him? No, I'll say no. No, okay, don't worry. He's all right. Yeah, because you got that from our kids. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got one. I got to see if I can remember it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> two two boats are in a in a boat race, okay? No, wait a second. I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to do the un, deux, trois, cat, sank that Sebastian told me as a kid, but I, uh, I the cat know. sank. Uh, you just blew it. Okay, let's do a different one. Let's do a different yeah. one. Okay, I got a different one. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell this joke I've known since a kid. Fair warning, there's one swear word in it. So this uh, young little man comes home for dinner. He's very hungry from school. His name's Jimmy. And Jimmy says to mom, you know, what's for dinner, mom? And mom says... One damn ham. And Jimmy says, Mom, why are you swearing at me? And Mom's like, no, no, that's actually the name of the ham. Damn ham. Oh, like, 
And, and it's like, damn. Oh, okay, all right. So the husband comes home from work and says, you know, honey, honey, what are we having for dinner? And the wife says, we're having damn ham. Hey, dear, like, just, I've had a rough day at work, and what's bothering you? No, no, honey, that's the name of the ham. So Jimmy's little brother, Johnny, comes home. They're sitting at the dinner table. And the husband looks to the wife and says, hey, honey, can you pass me some damn ham? And little Johnny says, that's the spirit, Dad. Pass me the fucking potatoes. Why did the mom say damn ham in the first place? Because it's the name of the ham. The name of the ham? Yeah, it's a brand like name. Like a brand name? Damn ham. Oh. She says that in the joke. I said, damn. Goodbye, everybody. I tuned out for a bit. <laughs> Bye. See you next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>